It's another edition of the Larry Tidwell Show. My name is Jonah Goldberg, and this is the aforementioned head coach of the UTRGV women's basketball team. Well, I tell you what, I appreciate that, and I like the UTRGV women's basketball show. It doesn't have to have my name on it. I'd rather, let's talk about our players. They're the ones who make things happen, and, and Dr. J, I appreciate you, the guru of media relations at UTRGV, Jonah Goldberg. First question. Well, the first question is, <laughs> I mean, you're two and zero on another weekend, four and zero in WAC play. Uh, you get the win over Chicago State, and then the win over Missouri, Kansas City. Now that second win at UMKC, that one was the first one you've had to come from behind in in WAC play, and you did so in grand fashion. Well, we did. We we played two solid games. You know, the the Chicago State game. Chicago State has a good good team. Their their record doesn't indicate what kind of team they have. They played us tough. I mean, they played us extremely tough. We we out rebounded them by one, and uh, they're a really good rebounding team. They have uh, Lane Murphy, who's uh, has a double double in mm -hmm. league play, and leads the league in scoring, and then leads the league in rebounds. And so, we had to contend with her, and that's through just you know four conference games. But they played extremely well, but we did too, and we 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 started out a little bit slow. We got ourselves back together got it put together, but just uh, what a game by Anushka Maldonado. Had 28 points, nine rebounds, had two, uh, just two assists, three steals. I mean, she was everywhere. Shantae Goff, you know, had 17 points for us and 40 minutes of playing. I mean, her and Anushka both played 40 minutes and they just gutted it up and got a lot of things done. Uh, Bernice Peters, Hilder, I mean, Raquel Preston, Michelle Hyman. I mean, I'm getting good quality minutes. Adil Turk has come off the bench and helped us a lot. So we got a lot of good things going. We're not playing a whole lot of players right now, but uh, we got some good things going. And that Chicago State game was a good game. And beautiful gym they have there. Um, atmosphere was good, and it was just a good, solid ball game. You know, you mentioned Turk, and actually she, uh, you know, in the UMKC game, she only played a couple of minutes, but in those two minutes, she hit a really big three when you were on the comeback trail. Uh, she did right before the half. We inserted her. We ran a trips play for her where she runs a baseline. She got some great screens, and she knocked it down. And then we ran another play, and uh, she got confused on a little bit, but she took a really good shot on the three, a little bit short, but she shoots it really soft and everything. And so even though she missed it, Lele Havili was able to get yeah. inside and get the rebound and got fouled and made two big free throws for us before half. And we took a lead after trailing 21 to 12. And that big comeback there, you ended up uh, winning by nine points after being down by nine points. It was nice to see your team react like that over the last three quarters. Well, you know, the, the thing uh, that's been very pleasing is our kids have really just bowed up and, and got after it. I mean, it's like a dogfight every time that we play because we're going to win. We're going to win on defense and what our defense creates for us. We're still not on a roll shooting yet. I know against uh, against Chicago State, 41 percent. That's probably the highest we've had this year. Came back against UMKC at 35 percent, and we need to hit in that 40 percent range. If we do, we're hard to beat because our, our defense is just stepping up. I mean. Um, we hold Chicago State, who's on a roll, to 37% from the field. And then we hold uh, UMKC to 32%. Um, we're ranked in the top, oh, I think, in the top 40 in the nation on field goal percentage defense. And that's a compliment to what uh, my assistant coaches do. They work extremely hard getting video. Uh, Anthony An Anderson is our video coordinator. Gabe Henry is our defensive coordinator. Hannah Burroughs and Scott Smith are always watching films, so we have a lot of input. We have a lot of hours that go into that, a lot of preparation, and uh, really hats off, hats off to those guys because they get us ready to play, and once league play starts, you don't have much time to prepare because you play a Thursday night game, and then you turn right around and you got a Saturday afternoon game. Just to give uh, a people an insight of what we go through is we left here uh, Wednesday morning at 4.30, got them up out of the Brock Village and got them headed to the airport. We get a flight at 6 o'clock. We 
go to Dallas. We got about a two-hour layover. Then we go to Chicago. Then we feed them. Then we lay down. Then we get up and we go uh, practice. And then you're back watching more video. Then we get some sleep. Then we get them up and uh, we go through a shoot around. And then we play, eat again, move to another hotel up at 4.30 the next morning to fly to uh, Kansas City at 6 o'clock, get them in, get a little rest, a little sleep, work out, video, eat a little bit. Then we wake up the next morning at, and get ready. We have pregame at 10. We play at 2 and then more <laughs> video. <laughs> and then the next morning on Sunday morning, because our flight was canceled, um, we didn't get home till Sunday afternoon. So it's, uh, you know, we played up in Chicago and where it's zero degrees and we're in Kansas City, we had six inches of snow. Ooh. And so it, it's a, uh, it's a uh, interesting when we travel in the WAC because the WAC is so huge. You know, we got trips coming up to where you go to Seattle and Cal Bakersville, you go to New Mexico State, you go to Grand Canyon, you go to Salt Lake City. Beautiful places to visit, but I do hope the people understand how hard these young ladies work to get yourself prepared because it is a lot of travel. And uh, getting on those planes is nice, but I'm going to tell you, it makes a long day when you get up at 4, 4.30 in the morning. So what these young ladies did at not only Chicago, but then the quick turnaround to get ready for a UMKC team, which is which beat Kansas City, I mean, which beat University of yeah. Kansas, which just got through beating uh, Cal State Bakersfield by 16 at Cal State Bakersfield. I mean... You know, they, they were playing really good ball. So we beat a, a very good team, and and it's reflected as we keep moving up RPI-wise. I noticed I looked at the NCAA, NCAA RPI today, and I think we were 165. So we continue to move up. And really great shape so far. I mean, you're 12-7 and seven now, which is the, you know, we say it all the time, but it is the best record you've, <laughs> you've ever had through 19 well, games. we want to keep breaking records. That's what we want to do. And. You know, again, our girls, I've been, you know, we coach this team. We do the best we can to get them prepared. But as coaches, we don't score points. We don't get rebounds. We don't get assists. We don't get steals. We don't take charges. It's all about your players. And our players are playing at a high level. The leadership I'm getting, the leadership I'm getting from Shante Goff, from Raquel, Pre oh, Raquel Preston's having a great senior year. Hilda Carson's daughter, Anushka Maldonado. And then we got some freshmen coming off the bench. I mean, Laura Van Tilburg has had valuable minutes for us, and she's going to continue to, to thrive at that. And again, Turk's one of the best shooters that I've ever seen. Michelle Hyman is a big-time competitor. Bernie Peters is a big-time competitor. Angie Villarreal, Sika Kuzik are waiting for their chance. Micheline Mercilita, Tristan Murphy, and Lele Havili is really starting to come on. And then when we get Mary Savoy back healthy, that'll help us. Jada Bennett, when we get her healthy, that will help us. So we got a lot of pieces to the puzzle, and we're going to continue to try to move forward and win the WAC on a big week coming up this week. Yeah, huge week. Uh, CSU Bakersfield uh, team, last time you faced them, it was a classic in the WAC tournament semifinal. 76-70 victory, and probably one of my favorite wins you've ever had. Well, I tell you what, uh, as we're talking on the show, I'm – looking right over your shoulder and watching the, <laughs> the game from last year because I'm trying to pick up on things that they might try to do to us. Um, they had a really got, great player last year, Outlaw, who's graduated, thank goodness. I mean, she's playing <laughs> overseas, and Greg does a great job out there. His kids play hard. You know, they have a point guard. It's phenomenal. And and then their inside post play is also good. They, they had a freshman uh, shooter that hit nine threes against uh, – Seattle on Saturday, so we got to make sure we're aware of where she's at at all times. Wow. So, you know, it's it's just one of those deals where, you know, we got to be prepared. We've got Cal State, you know, of course, coming in Thursday, and then we have Seattle on Saturday, and those are two huge games for this, not only for the conference games, but for this program. As we, as we try to build credibility across the southwest part of the country, across the country, we want to let people know that UTRGV, we, we – we come to win, and we're trying to win championships here. When you talk about three-pointers, now your opponents are only hitting 268 from behind the arc this season. That's uh, 24th in the nation, 
and it's a thousandth of a percent away from tying the program record for lowest uh, <laughs> three-point shooting percentage by opponents. So what have you been doing so well to limit their opportunities? Oh, I think it's, again, it's our, our kids are really moving. They're getting out. They're covering out. They're getting the hand up. It's a pride thing, you know, and that's, that's what it was really. When we played UMKC, they had some really good shooters. They shot 16% from the three. And I can remember in that game only, maybe three shots were not contested. And that's where we just messed up on some coverages. But every other shot was contested and, and probably saw uh, Hilda Carson got her play her best defense ever. I mean, she had 12 rebounds. Anushka Maldonado was so solid in there, a quarterback for me. She got in foul trouble. So I had to, had to move, uh, had to move Lele in there, had to move Laura in there. So we had a lot of people. I can always put Rock at a four, bring, you know, more guards in, but, uh, Shante Goff played some incredible defense, as did Raquel Preston. I mean, and when those two play defense, we're really good because they got length, they've got quickness, stamina, and yeah, that was good to see because we needed really good defense. And it was just a very, to set back, and we came over after the first quarter, we're down 21 to 12. In the previous two years, we might, oh, it would be so tight and panic a little panic a little bit not these guys they just said we're gonna get this and by the half we're up 33 31 and so you know it's uh, so important that we never 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 give in and we don't and I mean you've got that confidence and the other thing I've noticed especially these last few weeks there seems to be a laser focus around the team about every game well you know uh, that starts with your leadership and the leadership we have is exceptional and we're going to continue to do that, but again, the focus, you know, we, uh, just to give you an example, you know, we're, I guess we've gone green, is that uh, a good way to go? Our, all of our scouting reports are via the cell phone. Hmm. We don't use paper. You know, we'll get a hard copy to file away, things along that line, but all of our kids get that on their cell phone. They'll get, uh, with the Synergy program, they get game clips on their cell phone. They live on them, so why not have them right there handy? That's true. And so hmm. that helps us. You know, you go on the road. You don't have to look through your duffel bag. You don't have to look through. You just pull up your phone. You're watching video clips. You're watching. You're looking at your scouting report, and you're getting things done. And that's what we try to do. We try to work hard. We work really hard. But the thing that we're that we're we're really proud of is we're working smart too. Even an old guy like me can catch up with technology and. It's amazing because back when I first started coaching, we were reel to reel and those films <laughs> would break and then you splice them and then you wash it, you roll it back, they break again. And then I can remember when I thought v VHS was the greatest invention in the world. <laughs> and now it's so antiquated. You know, it's, it's amazing. Um, but technology has made, a has made a big difference on the impact of, of not only basketball but every sport every business in the entire world. Well, this week, school starts back up. You've had what is effectively a pro schedule the last uh, few weeks, but almost a month. And uh, now with school starting, does that affect uh, your preparation schedule at all? Well, it, it will because we've been watching video every morning at 11 o'clock and, you know, making sure we're prepared for workout. You know, they've got to, of course, go to class and they'll do all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, that, that helps us prepare you know, those, those videos and extra stuff, but we'll make adjustments. This team is, is great about making adjustments, and we'll do that, and uh, we'll get back in our routine. And I'm just grateful that we start the semester we're playing at home. That'll help us because, like our men, and congrats to them on two big wins yeah. this week. And uh, But our men will leave on, they'll start school on Tuesday, and then they'll leave Wednesday morning. Oof. at 4.30 in the morning just like we do because we get out there and get those early flights and we save $150, $200 per person per flight, you know. So yeah. you've got to do that. you got to stay within your budget. So, yeah, they've, they're they going to have to do that and then they'll have to adjust to coming back to school. It's, you know, there's a, a great appreciation from my staff and Coach Hipster's staff on how much these uh, young people, our players, how much they sacrifice to be a Division One basketball player because you think about basketball the game of basketball in college we don't have Thanksgiving 
if we're on the road or doing something play. Very limited on Christmas. And then if we take care of business and we have a good year, then spring break's taken up too. So it's it's been a while since I had a spring break and I like it. I like to keep it that way. But they they do sacrifice a lot and we do appreciate it. And again, the, the travel they go through is extreme. But it's part of the game and you suck it up, no excuses. UTRGV is back home on Thursday. They take on CSU Bakersfield, 7 p.m. right here at the UTRGV Fieldhouse, and then Saturday at 7 against Seattle U. And you can catch those games on television, online, or even better if you're in the area, make it out here to the UTRGV Fieldhouse. Ticket information and all that other information you could possibly need, go UTRGV.com. He's Larry Tidwell. He's the head coach of the UTRGV women's basketball team. Well, this is Jonah Goldberg media relations guru for uh, UTRGV Athletics, and I would just like to add, Jonah, we're tied. We're 4-0. We're leading the league. And right now, in attendance, we're number four. So we need to move up the ladder, and we need to have some packed houses. These young ladies deserve it. Well, now that school is back in session, hopefully we'll get the hopefully student we will. section going. Well, until then, we'll see you Thursday, we'll see you Saturday, and we'll see you right back here next week. Get your bees up. <laughs>